We're officially updated and it's a beautiful day in 1.21. The breezes are blowing, the crafters are crafting, the tough is... toughing? But somehow the more things change, the more they stay the same. And somehow on this beautiful 1.21 day, I found myself underground digging yet another gigantic hole. Now fortunately this hole was absolutely tiny compared to what we've been doing recently. And would you look at that, we finally got this room in here. This is going to be our storage area for all the farms that are right above it. And if you want to know exactly where this room is in relation to all the farms, if you look right up there, you can just barely see into our nether tree farm. It's just right down here. If we come down... There, you can see down into it. And that's actually really lucky because that means that our central storage room is gonna actually be fairly centralized, which I was a little bit worried about, but it shouldn't be too difficult to get all of these farms hooked up together and all delivering their goodies into the same centralized location. I've said centralized way too many times, haven't I? But that aside, welcome back to my Minecraft Playtime series where we're on episode 27. And this episode is going to be all about brand new 1.21 things. And specifically, it's going to be about the crafter. Because I've got so many farms up there and it's about time that I finally got them all hooked up here and got them automatically crafting. And well, it's, it's going to be amazing. But... We've got a lot of work to do. So before we do anything, let's just run back up top and get a few auto crafters going. Now this here is a copy of my normal world and we're just here in creative because I want to go through and give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm building. And essentially everything can be broken down into one of two machines. Now the first of those machines is actually really simple to put together and this is just the little machine that crafts everything together. I'll show you how I'm making it just so if you want to put it together in your own world you can do that as well. And I'll also link the video that I used to find this because I didn't come up with it myself. But it's also very important that you click all of these slots because, and I am far from a redstone master myself so just to give you like a little tiny taste of how this works, I believe this comparator right here it's checked into this which is fully blocked out and it's going into this comparator right here which is checking this one which has nothing in it right now so it doesn't allow the comparator to send its signal even if you fill it up just a little bit see this this thing here is blocking the signal I believe if I take this out see that'll turn it back on and it'll go off so this one here it's basically all it's doing is it's just stopping this from doing anything until it gets completely filled in which case it'll spit something out. And then the other machine that we're going to be using is a really typical item sorter that I think was made by Impulse like 10 something years ago. I, I know I've been using it for probably close to 10 years and I typically build this from the top so hopefully this works out but I'll, I'll speed this up for you. And there you have it, that should work actually. And then to get it working, all you gotta do is stick a couple blocks in here, just basically fill up all of these last four slots. And I typically use a named block because you don't want any items to ever be getting into here, but just for the sake of explaining it, it's pretty easy to do that. And then when you place any other block, let's just say we put purple in there, it's gonna tick down all the way to 41 and then all the other blocks are gonna drop down here. But then this thing, it keeps the purple blocks in there, which is really handy, which means that any items that come over top of it in this little chain of hoppers, if it's a purple block, it'll go down there and it'll fill up in here. Let's do a yellow wool here and we can, sure, we can do wood planks here. So now if I just toss some blocks in here, all of the items that we place in here, if it's a purple block, it'll go through and it'll get placed into this one. If it's an oak plank, it'll go all the way through to this one and then break down into this chest. And if it's something that we don't have in any of these, it'll just come straight across and it won't go into any of them. And again, I'm, I'm not a professional on how these work, but essentially this comparator is just looking here into this hopper and it's checking what's in here and then the signal travels all the way down but not quite down here to light the torch up. 
The only way you can light this torch up is if you fill this up with more items, like say we go like that, and see the signal will reach just a little bit farther to this torch, which will depower it and it'll allow items to pass back through here. And then once all the items get through, the torch will light back up, it'll lock the hopper, and you're stuck with 41. And everything that we're going to be building is basically just some sort of iteration or multiple reiteration of these two machines. Say we've got our iron farm and we need to separate the iron blocks from the poppies. So we'll put iron blocks into here, poppies into here, and then the poppies will just they'll just go on through because we don't need to do anything to them. But with the iron blocks, we really want to craft them. So all we're going to do is we're just going to break out all these blocks under here, place a little hopper here that will feed into the dropper. And then we just got to create this machine again, which is again, really, really simple. Just need two crafters. You got to make sure that you click all of the slots in this. It's very, very important. Otherwise it's not going to work. Toss down a block there, a block there, repeater there and then you're all done. And now as long as you've got all of your iron blocks stuck in there, any iron blocks that pop through here, they're gonna just go straight down. They're not gonna pass through. They're gonna go down through here into this chest and straight into the hopper. Uh, and you have to make sure you don't have a purple block there because that will make it not work. But if you take it out, then boom, we've got our iron blocks popping out and then we can just, you know, really easily stick a chest there and then they'll pop straight into the chest and it's about that simple. And the honey farm is actually a really good example of me just using those two machines to make something a little bit more complicated. So what we have here is we've got all of the drops heading down into an item sorter, one of which is honey bottles, the other of which is honeycomb. And then if we drop down here, all the honeycomb is going to come. Whoops, I don't want that there. All the honeycomb is going to go straight into this chest over here, while the honey bottles are going to drop down into this crafter right here. And this chest is going to contain both bottles and honey blocks. Because whenever you craft a honey block, you have two items that come out. You've got the glass bottles and then the honey blocks. And the honey blocks are just going to come down here. They're just going to sit in this chest here, whereas the bottles are going to come all the way around here and into this automatic dispenser system that will take them all the way up here to the top. And out of, oh, that's a perfect example. <laughs> they came right out at the perfect time. But yeah, they'll just come and feed down here into the water and then into this chest right here, which will go through and refill all the honey bottles. So yeah, it's it's a, it looks like a complicated system, but it's really not. It's just a combination of two really useful machines. You can see our bone meal farm is actually really simple. All we need is just the single crafter, whereas the melon and pumpkin farm, as well as the iron farm, because this is actually the exact same system, is just, you know, one of each. We've got a sorter up here to sort the melon. Oh, there's some coming through. The melons and pumpkins, and then the melons will come through and be crafted into melons. That was really good timing right there. That, that wasn't planned. <laughs> And then the iron farm is the exact same, except instead of pumpkins, we have poppies. And instead of watermelon, we have iron blocks. And I'll bet if we watch this, it'll fill up here and just... There we go. And now that we've got all those crafters set up, next we're going to have to bring everything down here, probably through water streams and into this room down here below. But this room actually has a lot of work that we need to do before it's ready to actually take those items. Because you can see there's no chest, there's no nothing. We're probably going to need to use a whole bunch of automatic shulker loaders in here. And we're going to need a lot of space for that. Not just for the storage room, which is probably going to come like right in here. I'll dig into here and we'll have like an inner storage room in here. But also for all the background stuff, we've got to have all sorts of space over here and over there and maybe even above. We're going to need lots of space to get all of the auto choker loading machines in here and all the sorting systems and just all sorts of stuff plus there's a really good chance that i build more farms here in the future so i want to have plenty of room to go through and add stuff later if i need to so we've got to get a whole bunch more digging done actually i i thought i was almost done with that but i guess not we've got to be just a little bit careful because i know in this direction here if we dig a little ways yep right here we'll run into this cave system that i made over here so we're gonna have to kind of find a way to dig around this so it's probably going to be just a little bit oddly shaped, but I think we can make it work. We're, we're going to have to do all the redstone in kind of a weird way just to get it to all fit in nicely, but I, I think it'll work out just fine and I'm ready to get started. So I'm going to get to digging and I will be right back. This should hopefully be big enough. 
And again, the, the room itself is not going to be anywhere close to this big, but we've got so much redstone that we've got to fit in and a whole bunch of just little stuff that we've got to tuck into the walls, like up in the ceiling and over here. So I'm thinking this will be big enough for what I'm planning. So it's time to start designing and decorating this room and getting it to the point where I can start to visualize what it's going to look like. And that'll make it so much easier to know where do I want to put the chest? Where do I want to do all this other stuff? And you can see I've already got a little bit of an idea of what I want here. I've got this pedestal coming up here to something really really special that i have planned you'll you'll get to find out in just a little bit what that's going to be and then two pathways going off to the sides leading into the area behind which is going to be where our storage area is and actually this is typically where i would cut off to do like a time lapse and it'd be this awesome me building up the area but i was thinking i'd do something just a little bit different this time and you can let me know in the comments if you like this or if you didn't really enjoy this as much or if it was too long-winded but i thought i'd work you through my design process again Again and show you how I build up this area and take it from just a random stone cave to looking like a hopefully really really interesting storage room and the first step and I've, I've said this before and I'll say it many times in the future I'm sure but when I get started on something I love to just build up walls just put in the walls it doesn't have to be what it's a, gonna be finally made out of it doesn't have to even look decent at all but just getting walls and a roof and a floor in here it all makes the room start to feel like a room and that's when I start to get to the point where I can be like oh okay well I want this over here and I think maybe this over here would be great you know just that sort of thing so let's real fast let's put up some walls put in a little bit of a floor and put in a ceiling Just like that it's already starting to look like a room just ignore this part in the middle because we'll, we'll we'll deal with that in just a little bit but with the walls all up and before we start getting to decorating i want to kind of figure out where we're gonna put all of our chests or in this case barrels because i think they'll look cooler maybe, maybe we'll do some of both with such a big space i'd really like to have a few of them at least that are kind of in the middle of the room rather than into the walls like a typical storage area but i'd also like to do it without making it too messy if that makes sense because you know I, I don't want to just have the barrel here and then a huge line of hoppers going all the way up just sitting in the middle of the room I think that's just a, a little bit too weird for me however I think we can do something a little bit different we can put like a pedestal here and then a barrel on top and then we can go through and we can decorate this and of course we have to have all of the hoppers going up but then we can go through and we can hide them by putting, you know, I, I don't know exactly what we're going to do, but some some other like fancy thing like this. In fact, maybe if we raise these up just one. Yeah, something like this. It, it kind of looks like a funnel or something like that, like a big gigantic hopper that we've got up here. I, I don't know. I, I think this looks pretty cool. We can go ahead and switch up the blocks in here and make it look a little bit fancier, but I think something like this would be really cool. Maybe we'll just have, I don't know, four or five of these throughout the room or I'm, I'm not entirely sure how we're gonna do it and then for the rest of everything because again one of the important things that we want to have is we want to have extra storage area for additional farms that we add in later and I think for those we can pretty easily just go through and we can knock these out of the walls and just put put some barrels in here like this it you know it's a little bit plain but once we decorate the room up I think it can look really really cool one nice little trick I found for when you accidentally make a wall with an even number of sides and you can't alternate things perfectly like you want to is instead of going from one side you go ahead and take these out and then you start from either side so we'll we'll go here and here place in these barrels do the same thing on the other side and then keep working our way into the middle until we've got one two three four one two three four and then see we've got this two in the middle so not not really a big deal but it's helpful and there 
there we go. Really, really simple. And I think this is going to be more than enough than we ever need. With all the farms that I have up there, we probably aren't even using half of this as it is. So let's let's go over and let's figure out these little pedestal storage modules. I'll take this one down. And really, I think just four of them is going to be plenty. Like, like I said, this is going to be more than enough storage. This is mostly just for looks. So I think I'll put them along this wall right here. That way we still have the open walkways around. And I think this is actually an even number as well. So we can kind of do the same thing. We can put one here on this side, put one here on this side, and then let's leave two open spaces in between because of course we've got to do something like that. And then come back over here. And this, yeah, I, I think that looks fine. We can throw a barrel on top of each one. I, I think I want to have it facing upwards just like this. And I think that's perfect. We don't need to go through and do all the decoration yet. That's going to come later on once we finish getting all the little redstone and hopper chains and all that little stuff hooked up. But yeah, I think this is a really good setup that we've got here. So I think now it's finally time we can go through and we can actually get everything running into here, which is going to be a pretty major process. You can see a couple of them, like the, the nether tree farm is right up there. And then our gunpowder farm is right up there. So those ones will be pretty easy. But the bamboo farm is all the way over here in our library. So I'm actually going to need to get all of this storage here taken all the way back underneath the mountain. It's going to be a pretty long trip but you know it's fine it's all within render distance so it's really really not a big deal but this is going to take me a pretty good amount of time because we've got lots of waterways that we've got to make to bring everything together so i think i'm just gonna throw a few clips together and you can see a tiny bit of the process but we're, we're just gonna skip ahead to when i've got it all done Building all of this was an exhausting process, but we're finally done and it feels so good. If you look through all of these machines, yes, I know what you're thinking. I can make a tileable version. I probably could have made this all look really, really neat. And yeah, I probably should have done that. But at the same time, I know how to do this. It was, it was pretty simple and yeah i don't know i sometimes i just like to do things in the way that i already know how even if it takes a little bit more effort and it's a little bit less clean and honestly i think this looks pretty cool either way not that any of this is actually going to be visible from you know down here in the room but it, it looks pretty cool from up there and there were so many different little hidden things like building all of these machines creating all of the waterways the fact that i would have to spend a lot of time on that is really really obvious but there were a lot of like really small things that honestly took up a lot of time like going through every single one of these machines and double checking to make sure that they actually work because boy i would hate to go through this whole process and then find out a long time 
down the line that I messed up something on the machine and it wasn't working because these things, it could take a really long time before I figured out that, oh, this shulker box isn't actually replacing itself because these take a long time to fill up since they're just getting passively added to by the farms. So it was really important that I go through and make sure that they all work and that took a lot of time. Even just designing like where exactly I want these. So I, I start on ground level and then go up and down, up and then down, down. And then I kind of tried to keep each one about one different from every other one. And that's basically just because each one of these, all of these chests that ultimately get all of the shulker boxes that are going to be filling up here, I need to eventually work these around so that they head into these hoppers. And I just, I kind of foresaw that being a little bit difficult if I had all of them here on the same level. So I, I made the decision to hopefully make my life in the future a little bit easier and give myself a little bit of extra room. Kind of the same thing with all the waterways. You can see we've got these two down here. There's one way up high there. There's one kind of in the middle. That one's kind of going through the middle. There's one over here on this side. And of course the gunpowder I tried to take over here on the other side. Just trying to make my life a little bit easier for when I eventually have to fill up all these other machines with farms. Because you can see, I most of these actually haven't even been set up. Like all of these ones, nope, nothing. Most of these actually haven't even been used. I'm gonna have so much extra storage for future farms. It's gonna be great, but I spent way too much time on this. It's time to get back down here and we're gonna keep designing this room and making it look really, really awesome. I'm so excited for this. And you might've noticed in the time-lapse, I actually kept this tough line in here. And the reason I did that is because I actually thought it looked pretty good. So we're, we're going to keep this here. I'm going to change it just a tiny bit. Maybe we'll use like some of the chiseled tough blocks. I'm, I'm not really sure. This this whole room is going to be really, really 1.21 themed. Maybe that might bother some people, but I'm just so excited to use some of these blocks, especially the, the tough blocks, the copper blocks. So yeah, spoiler alert, I, I'm, I think I'm going to be using copper blocks for a lot of the highlights. So you know, we'll get like some, some copper grates in the floor. Maybe we'll have like some pipes around here is kind of an idea I was thinking about. But I think first things first, we need to change these walls from just being flat black nothings into actually looking pretty good. And I'm going to start by using this tough line here. I think I might raise it up a little bit here and maybe lower it down over there. And then we'll also go through and I think I want to add like some stairs along the sides because adding stairs along the ceiling and the floor, it just, well, let, let me show you real fast. There, you see what I mean? It just adds a little bit of character to it. You got this along the floor that just gives it a little bit of something to break up the monotony. I added in, I actually switched it to chiseled tough. And actually, I think maybe I'll even lower this ceiling down just a little bit. Having this ceiling just a little bit lower kind of lowers your eyes as you come into here, as well as with the, the ceiling curved in here, it draws your eyes back to the center of the room and this centerpiece that we're eventually going to have here. Yeah, I, I think I really like that. But I said we were going to use some copper highlights, and I think I'm going to do these along the floor. At least for now. Maybe we'll put some in the walls as well, but I really like the idea of having some copper grates coming along the floor, down the center, maybe coming up here onto the black stone that we have up here on the central pedestal. And then as we go up onto these stairs, as well as down onto these ones, I think we can keep doing the same general pattern, but since we can't use grates, I got some copper slabs that we can place here. And I, I think that does the job just fine. And then we just keep going along down here and then all the way to the end. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And of course, we'll, we'll keep that going here in just a little bit. I'm just trying to focus on this one little corner area for now. And it's already looking really good. I don't think I'm going to do all that much more because again, the, the walls aren't going to be something you're going to be looking at a lot. Your eyes are going to really be drawn to this center area, which again, <laughs> I keep saying this, but we're going to get to it. It's, it's, it's going to be worth it. I promise. But yeah, we don't need to do too much crazy decoration. One little thing that we could do is maybe we could take like some stairs and create like these little holes in the wall, maybe in here like this, we can put a stair like that 
and then another one like that yeah and it, it just like really ever so slightly breaks it up and we can even put like some lava or something behind here and it'll help with the lighting so i don't have to have all this torch spam around we can do a little bit more of that maybe here and then along this wall so let me just go through i'm gonna do basically what i just did here and i'm just gonna extend it all the way around here and over here on this side and we're gonna get the whole room kind of tidied up not completely finished up but at least get it get like the beginnings of the design going and i think then we'll finally be ready to start here on this centerpiece and oh boy am i so excited for this it's gonna be really good There's still so much more detailing that we can do, but it's just, it's already starting to come together and I'm just absolutely loving it. But I think it's finally time. We need to put in the centerpiece. And after we put this in here, the entire atmosphere of this room is gonna completely change and I'm so excited for you to see it. So no more talking, I just wanna build. Just like that, the room feels completely different. We've got our giant furnace here in the middle with a nice mix of blue and red flames. We've got water streams on either side and these awesome pedestals with lava in them to give us light. I just love how it's turning out. The storage area back behind here, I went through and I created just a little bit of a fancy thingamajig, I don't know what it is, here on top of the chest, which I think looks really good. And the room itself could use a little bit more decoration, but it's totally fine for now. I'm not too worried about this at the moment. It's just so hard for me to believe that we're finally getting so close to being done with this project. This has been such an incredible amount of work, but also so much fun. And particularly astute viewers might recognize that we actually have a huge space that we still haven't used here. We used all of that area above to set up our shulker loaders. And we've got all sorts of water streams coming in, but this whole area, there's nothing here. And in order to put the final touches on our storage room, we're gonna need to build something a little bit unexpected. I highly doubt that anybody is gonna be able to guess what I'm gonna build here, unless maybe I put something like that in the thumbnail. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but oh, I'm, I'm so excited for this. Let's, let's put this together real fast. A villager breeder, you ask? Why in the world would you need not just one, but two villager breeders for a storage room? And the answer to that lies right here. That's right, this furnace here isn't just for show. We're gonna be burning fuel. And what fuel are we gonna be burning? Well, my favorite kind of fuel, of course. Just gotta make this long railway, grab a couple of villagers. And I'll even come over and toss them a couple carrots to kickstart the process. There we go. Now all the baby villagers that these guys have been making are going to be popping all the way down here and they're both going into the same place, which is right down here. You can see we've got all sorts of villagers down here, so I think we're ready to finally get started. So you see these water columns here? They're actually not just for show, ideally, and I'm not actually 100% sure that I'm gonna be able to make it work, but I'd like to turn these into bubble columns and have all of the villagers run down underneath and then they're gonna be pushed up through these water columns up above and then of course into our furnace where they belong. And I'll be completely honest, I'm really hoping this works on the first try because I'm planning to release this video tonight. So if this doesn't work, then uh, we're gonna have some problems. So real fast, I need to run up here and check out what coordinates these are. So we're at negative 424, 72. And then I need to come down here and dig all the way over to where those coordinates are. And I think this should be it right here, so we can just dig straight up. Boom, we made it. All right, we've got our water columns all set up. We can go up here and just double check. Yep, we're good here. And we come all the way around right into the fire. Block this off so there can be no escaping. 
and I think we're ready to release them. All right, this should be all set up. And before anybody goes around saying, oh, this is unnecessarily cruel or anything like that, you'll notice that there's nothing, you know, forcing them to go in. They don't actually have to walk through there if they don't want to. They're just going through of their own free will whenever they feel like it. So yeah, I think all we need to do now is wait. It looks like they do occasionally get caught here, which is a little bit of a pain. And the fact that you're alive makes me feel like I need to actually... Oh. Nice. So it's at least working partially. That being said, I definitely need to fix it up so they can get through just a little bit easier. And I need to add some campfires here on these sides like that. Come on. There we go. Good enough. And as for this part, I really like having the iron bars here, but I don't know, maybe I'm going to have to do something a little bit different. It is working sometimes though, which is really, really satisfying. Maybe I just swap it for glass? Well, this isn't exactly the look that I was going for, but I think it still looks fine. I'm going to leave this one iron bar in here, and I think that should prevent most of them from hanging out here. And I mean, if I, if I get a few stuck in there, it's not really a big deal. They'll get themselves unstuck eventually, right? And that was going to be the last thing I do today. However, I think it'd be really cool if I could get it so that the villagers would come up these water ladders only when I actually come into the room. And I think I could do that pretty easily by setting up a redstone circuit that will, I don't know, maybe I can use like a tripwire or something when I cross through here and it'll activate redstone that'll go all the way down to here where the villagers are. You can see all the all the villagers already went through. And then I can set up, maybe I'll put like some blocks here like that and like that. And then I can just make a piston. Well, let, let me uh, let me just put this together real fast. So we can toss a block there. And basically when I'm gone, I'll just have these up so the villagers can't possibly get through there. And then when I leave, then this thing will come off. And of course it'll be a sticky piston. So this will go all the way down to here and they'll be able to pass through. So I think that's going to be a pretty simple circuit to do. The only real difficulty is I just have to send the signal a really long ways, but that's that's really not a big deal. And you know what? This has turned into a surprisingly momentous occasion. I decided to use a tripwire, which means that this is the first time I've ever made a T flip flop in Minecraft before or in a redstone machine before. I've heard about this thing so many times in like Mumbo and Tango videos, but this is my first time ever building it myself, and for anybody who doesn't know what it does, basically it just changes a button or like a tripwire pulse into a long pulse. Because you'll see, I don't know if I explained that quite well, but you see this redstone right here. If I go over the tripwire, it lights it up for just a second, but then it turns off. But I need it to stay on. So what this does is I'll flip that again. It activates this and it creates a constant redstone line right over here. And if I hit it again, it'll turn it off. So if we look at this and this is off, then if we run all the way down there, you can see that the pistons here are not activated. So they're down and all the villagers can walk through straight to their own deaths. However, when we flick it again, this redstone line will be on. And when we go all the way down here, then these will be flipped up and they will not be able to walk in. So yeah, nothing fancy. Any talented redstoner would probably be ashamed of all this weird and funky lines going around, but I'm so happy with it. It means that whenever we walk through, we can set it so that it'll turn on the machine or I guess allow all the villagers to go up through the water. And then when we leave, it'll turn it off. None of the villagers can go through. And that way, hopefully, ideally, when we come into our room, that's when we'll get to hear the sweet sound of villagers burning to death on these campfires. But I think that's going to be the end of this video. This thing is working perfectly. We've got some nice villagers coming down and fueling up our furnace, which is activating all of the farms that we've got in here. Just just you'll just have to use your imagination. I, I know they're not actually doing anything, but but we can play pretend. I just love the idea that all of these those farms up there are running off of the beautiful sounds of burning villagers. And of course, I've got a lot of uh, little things to do in here. I've got a deoxidize is that a word i need to deoxidize all of this copper because i think i i want this all to stay that really bright orange and you know there's there's lots of little things back here like i was saying i wanted to do pipes i think i'll have to do like some uh elevators so that i can get up into the upper areas without 
you know, having to go back behind into this area over here. But I'm just so happy with how everything turned out. I think it looks amazing. It's thematic. We got some silly little redstone going on in here and it's it's just it's just so cool. But yeah, I've really got to get this episode all finished because this has already been I think this is definitely my longest video ever and I don't want to put anybody off by having like a 40, 50 minute video. I'm not sure exactly how long it's going to be yet, but definitely over 30 minutes. So um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.